Hi there, Rafael, Natalia, uh, Rafael, Rafael, and Natalia. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, great to be with you all. Yannick is running from the other side of the conference hall um, to get here to present, but uh, we'll get started because we've got a full room of people uh, joining us and ready to talk. To get started, maybe can we go around and just all introduce ourselves and talk about why we're here? Okay, okay, I can start. I can start. Um, uh, so, hello, so everyone. hello everyone. I'm Natalia, I'm Cruz. Natalia Cruz. I'm not sure if I'm you're sure also, you're hearing also hearing my my voice. We we are yeah. having some. Okay. Oh, thank you, Hoshe. <laughs> uh, so I'm Natalia Cruz. I'm a I'm a head of open banking here at Sensidia, and the purpose of our discussion here is to talk about. Uh, why open finance? What are the benefits that we see and uh, what we expect from the future? Hey, who can go next? Yes, I can go here. Well, I'm Rafael Rocha. Uh, actually, I'm a head of API solutions with focus on open banking, open uh, finance as well. Uh, actually, I, I work to understand the, the customer and the client needs and, and then design a solution based with our products here in Syncedia, products and services. We have a lot of products based uh, products uh, for open finance, open insurance, open banking, and so on. It's all. Go ahead, my friend, Rafael. The all other right. Rafael. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, I'm Rafael Esquerdo. Uh, I'm a product manager here in Sincidia. Uh, I've been working with open banking since 2019 when all of this started in Brazil. And we're here today to talk about uh, everything that is open. Let's say that's this way. <laughs> I'm excited to hear the conversation. I'll step back now, yeah, Janneke, yeah, as I was saying, was saying with running from, I'm actually not on mute, so I don't know what that's, I hope you can hear me now. Um, but anyway, so um, I'll let Janneke take over and um, have a wonderful session. I'll uh, look forward to hearing the discussion. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Hello, Janneke. Hello, everyone. Yes, and thank you. Thank you, Mark, for stepping in. I was a long way away in another, in another session. Um, yeah, so very good to have you all, all here. Um, my name is Jan-Nico Alto and I work as an open um, system, sustainability program lead uh, with Mark at the Platformable. Platformable. And so this session is all about open finance, future is open, that's your, that's your um, area. So um, obviously open finance is a, is a massive trend, it's growing, growing, growing. Uh, it's considered the, the next significant trend in the, in, in the financial industry. So uh, why don't we start with an overview of... Um, you know, you want to discuss how open finance is impacting and leveraging the, the business opportunities. So we have about 20, 20 minutes for this conversation. I encourage the audience members to put in any questions so you can take a part in the conversation if you have something you want to contribute, if you have questions for our speakers. So we're going to have an open format conversation between our three speakers, and then I'm going to bring in some questions from the audience um, as, we, as we speak. Yeah. So who wants to kick us off <laughs> i can do that uh, so um it's nice meeting you yannicka i'm so happy to be here and uh, so let's talk about open finance um for us to talk about open finance we should start with open banking and uh, the concept of it and um Open banking is a movement for us to for the banks to open their information and to customers to open their information as well as long as they they give their consent to do it. So uh, you talked about leveraging uh, businesses and opportunities, Yannicka, and uh, this is the main reason that this movement is so popular here in Brazil. So. Uh, the purpose here is to understand what are the benefits for those companies uh, and the benefits for the customers as well. So companies will be able to have more uh, products and services and to increase their market share 
and also to uh, gain more customers and retain the, the current customers that they have. So for the end user, uh, there are benefits too. Uh, we believe that there will be more uh, credit offers, more better credit off offers here in Brazil. And especially because of the, the, the population that we have here. So uh, Brazil is a, is a country with over 200 million people. And uh, after the pandemic started, we noticed that Uh, a lot of those people, uh, 40 million people, Brazilian people, uh, started uh, having more contact with financial institutions because they had to access their their funds, their uh, what else you do? their fundamental services here uh, that the government gave those people, and uh, this makes people uh, have more contact with digital channels and uh, the, they want to learn more from those those things and use more uh, those of those services uh, since uh, Brazil has had a lot of unbanked people before the pandemic started uh, we see that now Uh, there's a very interesting number, 73% of the unbanked people here in Brazil uh, dropped. The number uh, dropped in, uh, and it was very, um, um, this was very, it, it was a shocking number for us. So I think uh, there, is a, a, there is opportunity to achieve those population, to offer more services, and also to uh, make uh, financial education more popular here in Brazil. Yeah, yes, that's really, really interesting. Um, I guess touching on the regulation then, or, or some of the, the key things that can boost this this development and this growth further. Can you talk a little bit about what do you see or foresee happening in that space, say in the next 10 years? Where do you think regulation um, is needed to boost the, the growth of this industry? And then let's start with that and then we can talk about some of the challenges next. All right. Well, um, I can start that. Um... I guess here in Brazil, we have the regulator with a really intense role. So we have the regulator uh, telling the, the institutions what to do and, and designing the APIs that they must implement. So the role of the regulator is really important because if institutions don't implement the APIs, they are going to be uh, kind of punished by the regulator. So That brings to open banking here in Brazil um, a really uh, a, a, a very nice speed of implementation. So uh, institutions have to achieve the dates, right? So the regulator, uh, uh, besides the APIs, they also tell the, the institutions when they should uh, put their APIs uh, for the customers to use. So that role is really important. Uh, we have seen in other uh, uh, countries that the regulator doesn't have a really intense role uh, being played, which can be really challenging because uh, it's, it's on the market to decide what to do and when to do it. And so when you have the regulator, uh, you, must, uh, uh, you must reach the dates and The, the API design so the ecosystem uh, can work properly. Uh, and, and what I've seen so far is, is that the open bank implementation, it's a step-by-step -step process. So uh, we see that in UK, for example, it really started, uh, the institutions really started to use uh, the APIs in a, in a way that it was kind of, um, let's say an exper experiment way and we we have seen that along the years the the use have been increasing and and we we kind of see this here in brazil too so we had the first apis uh in production a couple months ago and we started to see an increase of 
of the user. So uh, in 10 years, maybe uh, we are going to see a change, a really big change in the market that we might not be able to, to tell you right now what to expect in 10 years. But what I see in like five years, maybe, is uh, the people uh, using uh, different financial products, uh, people being offered uh, really customized products and services in in their uh, in their journey. So, if, for example, if you're buying something, and and and, and this product is related to uh, any other financial product, uh, they will make sure that you can see uh, this whole new world of other products that you can you can buy or you can choose to aggregate aggregate with the product that you're buying. So uh, for the users, it's going to be good because uh, people are going to be more interested in financial products, in, in investing their money, in, in, in being the, the real owner of their money. So uh, maybe in 10 years, uh, the financial education will be uh, a really a really a whole new market for 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 everybody yeah yeah that was going to be my rafa yeah. do you want to add yeah, something? yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want to complete the what Rafa was saying in, uh, about the the perspective of future of the open finance as well but me as a technical guy i want to to to, to share a, a little bit about the technical view of the in the implementation of the whole thing and uh, uh, what I see, the, the, the first thing that we need to, to, to think is think that uh, this open finance uh, layer should, should be implemented uh, using um, platform thinking. Because if you, if you have a platform that you can, of course, uh, uh, implement uh, and stay uh, uh, with compliance with the regulations, but also prepare you to the future, to the next years, to the next products that you are building upon this platform. And the platform thing is, is, is a crucial way to, 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 think, to think in a, uh, in a implementation, in a technical view, to support the, uh, the, all the evolution that we need to, to, to test and then you need to see in the, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. and, a little bit more about uh, this platform thinking. It's it's important to say that platform uh, that will uh, provide a lot of capabilities uh, in order to 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 be compliance in, as I said, also to evolve to the new products and services. And of course, the, the first the first capability this platform should should uh, implement should be the API exposition. And also API consuming, the API cons uh, the API expositions relies to the or I need to implement the API uh, compliance with the regulation because we have a common standard, a common schema that should be implemented. Also, we uh, this platform should uh, be able to implement a lot of. Uh, security standards. We are seeing standards like uh, OpenID Connect and uh, FAPI and other ones that uh, uh, the regulation is, is a requirement from the, the, the regulation side. Uh, so uh, thinking about the capability of security and uh, in be able to plug a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, security standards, what is the marketing they using? It's a crucial part of that. And um, also, uh, we, we think this platform, the, the, the third thing that the third capability that this platform should uh, provide should be the consent services that we, uh, it's a crucial part of, uh, of course, the, if we are exposing with a sharing data, sharing services, the end customer, the end client, should of, of course consent about the transaction, about the sharing of uh, all the data. So the consent consent services uh, should be able in this open finance platform 
uh, should be able to evolve, also to evolve to the, uh, we are saying about the, the, the open banking flavor, we're saying about the open insurance, open investment, and so on. Mm -hmm. So the consent services uh, should be, um, should in, in implement this, all these flavors that all those uh, uh, types of open finance that uh, we are seeing on the next couple of years. And the other capability that is are crucial is the integration of, with the regulatory side. You know, the, 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 we need to expose, for example, APIs that the regulatory uh, uh, provider will uh, request for data, request for metrics, request for things like that. So the, the integration of the, the regulatory offices uh, are an important thing also in this platform. And in the last one here, uh, we capability that we implement in this platform thinking is the integration with the core services. So, uh, because of course the core services we are, is where resides the customer data, where is the, uh, the, the, the transaction services, and things like that, the core services. Um, and so uh, provide an integration layer to this, uh, these services, the core services is also crucial to implement because, uh, because if you are exposing uh, the data to the, to the other parties, uh, this data should, uh, should be prepared for read, for example, because uh, you, you should not expose directly your car system because it may be your car system, car application should not be able to be scalable uh, when, you, when we open all those data for the external uh, consumers. Mm. Uh, well, I, I, I see that as the, the main capabilities mm -hmm. that a platform should implement. Yeah. Thank you. That's really good. Nice to have the, the technical uh, overview as well. Um, we've got about five more minutes, so I'm going to bring us to the last question. Uh, we're an ambitious bunch um, in the API scene, so I want to talk a little bit about challenges. So from your experience where you're sitting, we're thinking about open finance in the future, say, five to ten years. Now, none of us have a crystal ball, but if from where you're standing, what do you think are some of the key challenges that is worth just highlighting, is worth us all being aware of as we continue building this, this space. Um, whoever wants to go first. Natalia. Okay, uh, I can name one. Um, I think the greater challenge that the, the financial institutions will have, the, the, secure, the insurance companies will have, is how to continue attracting their customers, continuing offer, um, how can I say that they will have to be better than their competitors always and forever, you know, they will have to continue on improving services, products, and always considering the user experience in their platforms. So I think this is one main challenge that they, those institutions will have. Do yeah. you, who wants to go? Yeah, I, I can add, I can add few challenges, but uh, for me the main challenge is it's it's how to manage open APIs. So uh, we we're talking about open banking and open finance, and and everything is open, but to have a platform with open APIs, it's not a a, a very uh, easy thing to do. So if companies are not uh, prepared to open their APIs, to have a really strong security uh, policies, and 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 especially uh, have this knowledge of of building and designing and exposing APIs to the market, uh, they they might have some 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 problems with that. So uh, managing open APIs for me is is the main is the main challenge. Along with that, API performance is, is another big challenge. 
So once, once you have all this API exposure uh, going on and, and you have customers uh, accessing those APIs and consuming data and transmitting data, uh, those APIs uh, need to perform, they must perform. So the user experience uh, cannot be affected by that. So uh, one thing is exposing APIs. Another thing is, is how, how good is your APIs? So having the knowledge of design and building and exposing APIs might be the, the, the big challenges for the, for the future in open, in open finance. Yeah, very yeah, good just, points. Rafael, quickly from yeah. your perspective. <laughs> yeah. for, for me, for me is a uh, uh, um, big challenge is related to, uh, in a business perspective, uh, go beyond the regulations, you know, because uh, especially for the middle size, middle tier, uh, and the small businesses and small companies, insurance and banking as well, because uh, uh, it's not clear what we, uh, what kind of products that we go with in, in this open API space and open insurance, open banking, open investment. It's not clear, uh, you know, because uh, they they are they, they have only in their mind their mindset is ah uh, we have only to be compliance we don't have space to 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 innovations or things like that. And uh, for me, of course, in the big companies, uh, the, the the innovation pace is different. So, of course, it's a it's a it's a space much more it, it's much more able for innovation. So, for me, the, the the go beyond in the middle tier companies is the main challenge. Yes, thank you. So, it's more of a mindset of be ambitious, try to do a little bit more than the the bare minimum can really get where we need to yeah. be or want to be going. Nice. Um, great. Thank you very much for all of our three speakers. That was really, really interesting. Um, just briefly, if people want to get in touch with you or continue the conversation, they heard something that was interesting. What's the best way to get uh, a hold of your of your team? Um, uh, we could put our LinkedIn here in the chat. What do you think, guys? Yeah. Yeah, please do. And I think there's also, we, we all have a, a profile here on Hotbin, so there's also a way to connect with you. From, yeah. from that way but yeah please do you put your your contact details oh they actually are already in the in the chat so if people any okay. of the attendees want to get uh, a hold of you feel free to send a LinkedIn message and connect that way yeah, yeah. Sure. yes thanks to anybody everybody who joined the session thank you for the speakers um, it was a pleasure and have a nice rest of the of the day go and check out some of the other sessions and uh, I'll catch you later thank you Yannicka yeah. thank you guys thank you,